Praise the living God. I want to welcome you all to the service. For those of you worshiping with us for the first time, you are welcome to the Greater Success House of God live service. I decree and declare that as you continue to join us from today, greater success will become your portion in every area of your life like never before. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. It's always exciting, awesome to be in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says they go from strength to strength, each one of them that appears in Zion before God. Anytime we show up like this, heaven is opened. Because it says, where, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Each time we gather, the heaven is opened to bless us with revelations, to bless us with empowerment, to bless us with transformation for a greater dimension of exploits, success, and prosperity. And we are believing God that by the time this service is over, we are going to be refreshed in our spirit, in our soul. We are going to be refreshed with new power, new energy, new light, fresh oil from heaven so that we can enter into a new dimension of success in every area of our lives in the name of Jesus. This evening I'm sharing with us what I have titled by the Spirit, How to Know the Mind of God. How to Know the Mind of God. You know, by divine ordination, it is practically impossible for any soul to fulfill destiny in life without divine or spiritual guidance. Without divine or spiritual guidance. If you study Genesis down to the book of Revelation, it will occur to you that no biblical figure ever fulfilled purpose in life without God guiding that person either by his spirit or by angels or through the mouth of his prophets. Hallelujah. So we can understand that fulfillment of destiny is a function of divine guidance. Divine direction. Divine instruction. When applied. Hallelujah. Even Jesus himself. You study the book of Matthew chapter 4. Also in Luke chapter 4. Angels ministered to him. The Spirit ministered to him. So if Jesus, God in person, would still require divine guidance to fulfill his earthly mandate, who do you think that you are to run with sense knowledge and still believe that you can fulfill divine purpose? Who do you think that you are to run with sense knowledge and still believe that you will muster the energy, the wisdom, the inspiration, the light, the empowerment to fulfill destiny? That's why I'm excited. Because most of us, we don't seem to understand what it means to be divinely guided. We don't understand what it means to receive spiritual guidance so that our journey on earth will be blissful and the fulfillment of destiny will be guaranteed. Now let's look at Gen uh, Exodus, sorry, Exodus 23. 
Exodus 23 and verse 20. He said, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. I sent an angel, God says, before you to guide you, protect you, because there are enemies. There are forces that are making sure that you don't fulfill destiny because your destiny is enviable. Your destiny is glorious. Your destiny is ordained to change the order of the world. Many don't know it. Many don't know it. If you know what you carry, if you know what is inside you, you will understand that to fulfill destiny is the only thing that God is interested in. Anything that any human being is doing that is not geared towards fulfilling the purpose of God on earth, that thing will just be something that the person is doing to, you know, spend time, have fun, but God is not in it. You want to bring God into your life, step into your purpose. Begin to walk towards the direction that leads to the fulfillment of the purpose for which you are born into this world. Hallelujah. He said, I have sent an angel to go before you, to protect you in the way, and to bring you into the place that I have prepared. There is a place God has prepared for each and every one of us. There is a destiny to fulfill. There is a vision to bring to fruition. There is a purpose to actualize. Because life is a function of purpose. Remove purpose, life has no meaning. So God said the reason why he has sent an angel to go before you is to protect you in the way and then bring you into the place that he has prepared. That means the, 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 the duty, the job of the angel is to protect you from any harm. To ensure that you arrive at the place that God has prepared for you. In other words, to ensure that you fulfill your purpose on the earth. Hallelujah. Again, in Exodus 33, verse 15. Exodus 33 and verse 15. At this time, it has beginning to occur to Moses that embarking on any journey without divine direction, is to take a risk. A risk that he may not survive. A risk that he may not be able to afford. So right here in Exodus 33 verse 15. And he, Moses, said unto him, that is God, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hither. In other words, if your presence will not go with us. Don't let us move from this place. Because what guarantees that we fulfill purpose in that journey is that your presence goes with us. You know, the presence of God is different from God. God can send his presence He can send his presence by sending an angel or by sending his spirit to come upon a, a, a prophet as it were in the Old Testament. Because in the New Testament we have the spirit abiding in us. In the Old Testament the spirit comes for a purpose. When that purpose is fulfilled, the spirit departs. So you study the Old Testament, you keep hearing and the spirit of the Lord came upon so and so and so. And he prophesied. Prophesying means he spoke solution to the problem. 
and the spirit of the Lord came upon so and so, and so, and he prophesied. So the purpose for which the Holy Ghost comes on people in the Old Testament is to prophesy solution to a problem, to tell the king or whoever that is in charge what to do to remedy a situation. Because the Holy Spirit is God's inspiration. The Holy Spirit is God's creative energy. And it's so wonderful to hear that the Holy Ghost that comes on people for a purpose and depart is now abiding in us forever. That means we are supposed to be living an inspired life. Every day, our inspiration is supposed to be higher than that of yesterday. We are supposed to be generation that is manifesting divinity, creativity, unlimited. And one of the reasons why these things are not happening, especially in this part of the world, is because we have reduced the Holy Ghost to something that the Holy Ghost, I mean, is so dis disheartening. We have reduced the Holy Ghost to little feelings, little shiverings, fallings, and all that. These are just manifestations of God's presence by the Holy Spirit. But the creative power is the main purpose for the manifestation. The, create, the creative power is the main purpose for the presence. There is always a purpose, there is always a place that God has prepared. And that is the reason why he says he sent his angel or he sent the Holy Spirit to abide in us, to bring us into that place that he has prepared, a place of creativity, a place of invention, a place of innovation, a place of leadership, a place of empowerment, a place of serving your generation, so that as long as this earth remains, your name will not cease in the tongues of men. He said, the righteous shall, shall be of everlasting memoria. The righteous, the one who fulfills destiny, he said, he shall be of everlasting memoria. That means, generations after generation, men will keep talking about his legacy. Men will keep talking about what he has done. As a matter of fact, what he has done will keep empowering generations. Hallelujah. You see, if your presence will not go with us, we are not going anywhere from here. <laughs> it will be a risk to take one step if your presence is not going with us. The presence of God is what guarantees stressless journey. The presence of God in, an, in, the, in the life of an individual is what guarantees that that individual fulfills destiny to the glory of God. Many of you, God has given you visions. God has given you things to do, to accomplish great things, mighty things. Because that is what he said he will show you. In Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, he said, Call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Things that are in you that you are not aware of. Abilities that you have that you are not aware of. Inspirations and visions you have received and trivialized them without knowing that they are part of what you have been destined to to receive from heaven so that your destiny can be fulfilled. He said, I will show you. In other words, I will open your eyes to see great and mighty things that you are not aware of. You are not conscious of them, but they are there. They are there. I wish I have time to tell you things that God has opened my eyes to see. Things I never knew existed. Things I never knew I could do. Realities, I never knew that, that we are there. 
until God opened my eyes, the eyes of my heart, the eyes of my understanding. Because that is where, that is the eye we are talking about. This physical eyes is limited. There are so many things you may be looking at, but you are not seeing it. But anything you look at with the eyes of your heart is comprehended. When Paul prayed for the church in Ephesians chapter 1, you read from verse 17 down to 19. He said that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened so that you will know. He said, we pray the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. And then the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Being enlightened. The Amplified say, being flooded with light so that you will know. Light creates awareness. If you walk into a dark room, there is no way you can know what is in that room until light is turned on. So the essence of light is to create clarity. Is to create what? Clarity. And the light of God is what empowers men to fulfill destiny. He said in him was life and that life is the light of men that lighted upon every man that cometh into the world. So you come into this world and you are bankrupt of light. Then you are you are automatically in darkness. And when you are in the, in the dark, you stumble upon things without even knowing what you are stumbling on. It's a risk to try to live your life without the light of God in your heart. And we are told never to allow the light to go off. Leviticus chapter 6 from verse 12 to 13. He said the fire or the light must never be allowed to go out. He said the priest shall burn wood on the altar every morning. So you have a responsibility to burn wood upon your altar every morning so that your fire will keep burning. May your fire never go out in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, to know the mind of God, you must be open to the ministries, one, of the written word of God, two, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and three, the ministry of angels. There is no way you can know the mind of God that guarantees your guidance to fulfill destiny without being open to these three ministries. And we are going to be exploring them one after another. The ministry of the word of God, that is the written word, the Bible that we have, is the first ministry you must be open to. And it's the first because God cannot guide you either via the Holy Spirit or via angels without his word. The Bible says he has exalted his word above all his names. That means no matter what you can know God as, if you are bankrupt of his word, he has no business with you. You can know him as Elohim, Adonai, El Shaddai, Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, the Holy One of Israel, Creator of heaven and the earth the bright and the morning star, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the balm in Gilead. He has exalted his word above all these names. So if you like, know him beyond all his names. As long as you are bankrupt of his word, he has no business with you. Because his word is him. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. <laughs> All things. Your word is you. As I'm speaking to you now. My word is me. 
He said, all things we are made by the world, and without the world was not anything made that was made. So if the world is behind every source of inspiration, the world is the source of empowerment. The world is the source of revelation that transforms. You are bankrupt of the world, then you are really, really bankrupt. Because the word is what adds meaning to your life. Because without the world, you cannot have the light and the understanding that will empower you to fulfill destiny. He said the entrance of his word giveth light and understanding unto the simple. The primary assignments of the Holy Spirit and angels are to make you understand the written word of God as documented in scriptures and in every anointed or God-inspired writings of men. I have to repeat this. The primary assignment of the Holy Spirit and angels are to make you understand the written word of God as documented in scriptures and in every anointed or God-inspired writings of men. It is the light that you have inside of you that empowers you to walk through darkness and still see your way. The world, the Bible says, are in darkness. He said, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise in thee, and his glory shall be seen in thee. The glory of God is the light of God, and that light is bettered by his, by his word. So it is the light of God you have in your spirit. The light of God ablaze in your spirit is what empowers you to walk through darkness and still fulfill destiny. The good news is that when you carry God's light and you are walking through this dark world, those that will follow you because of the light you carry, you will not help them to see their way out of darkness and still fulfill destiny. We don't know that destinies are tied to each and every one of us. There are people that for them to fulfill destiny, they must, they must be in contact with you. They must be partakers of the grace of God that is upon your life. Paul said, ye are all partakers of my grace. And because ye are all partakers of my grace, you will be empowered to fulfill your individual purposes, destinies. Because through me, God has brought the light. Through me, God has brought the light that will now light up men, light up men to fulfill destiny. That means you are limited in life without the understanding of the written word of God. Because until the word is unfolded, the unfolding of the word, Psalm 119 and verse 130, that scripture says, The entrance of thy word giveth light, and it giveth understanding unto the simple. That word, entrance, simply means the unfolding. When something is unfolded, it means that you cannot see the content. The word of God is wrapped in mysteries, packaged in stories, in riddles, in proverbs. Each one that you are able to decode, unravel, unfold, becomes your light. It becomes your weapon of the spirit, your sword of the spirit. You say, and take ye the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the word that is the 
unfolded to you becomes your sword of the spirit. And because you are a soldier, whether you know it or not, with the sword of the spirit, you can now battle your way into victory. The victory is, is guaranteed, but you must engage in the battle to become victorious. You say, fight ye the good fight of faith. So it's a good fight. It's not a bad fight. And it is called a good fight because your, your victory is, is assured. All you have to do is to take up your sword of the spirit and engage in the battle. He said, fight ye the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, wherein ye are called. So whether you, like, whether you know it or not, you are called into a battle. You are called into a fight. And then he said, the, the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not inventions of men. They are not carnal wisdom, the wisdom of men. He said, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and then casting down imaginations and every high thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And then taking into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That is the battle. The battle is to cast down imaginations and every high thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge. Against the knowledge that will empower you. Against the knowledge that will equip you. Against the knowledge that will bring the light that you need to see your way through and fulfill destiny. There are forces against that light. But to destroy these forces, you need your sword of the spirit. Because he said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You can't be fighting the enemy with the same weapon the enemy invented. The enemy will win because he knows how to use that weapon more than you. So he says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not physical weapons. <laughs> he said, but they are mighty through God. Yes, they are mighty through God. So God is the one that supplies through the Holy Ghost. He's the one that supplies the weapons of our warfare. And that is the sword of the Spirit. You get it when the word is unfolded. Take ye your shield of faith, where you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Which is the word of God. And the word there, in that verse in Ephesians chapter 6, is not talking about the logos. It's talking about the mystery that is engulfed in the logos. That is what we call Rema. You can't assess Rema without the logos. I just told you that scriptures are written in parables, in riddles, <laughs> in stories. Behind these stories, behind these riddles and parables, you find the rema. They are down there. Rema is not hanging on the... On the you don't dig shallow and find rema. You have to dig deep to find the rema. You have to dig deep to find the rema. So you must study the world. You must be open to the ministry of the world so that you can be armed with the sword of the spirit that guarantees your victory in the battles of life. Now, why must you open up to the ministry of the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the secrets of God. Hmm. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the secrets. And when I say secrets, deep secrets, Deep secrets of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit is the only one that knows the mind of God. So there is no way you can know the mind of God without the Holy Spirit. He's the custodian. He's the one that is in charge. He's the one that is in charge. 
The Holy Spirit knows everything about God. Angels only know what they have been told to come and reveal to man. And I wish I have time to explain some things about angelic categories. You know, dimensions of angels and their duties. I'm going to conduct a teaching on that. All angels in heaven are not functioning on the same jurisdiction. They don't have the same rank. They don't have the same authority. They don't possess the same knowledge about God. And they all have their offices. Gabriel is known to be the one that stands in the presence of God, in the throne room of heaven. That was why he had to reintroduce himself to Zechariah when he came to him in the book of Luke. To tell him that him and his wife are going to have a child. Zechariah was trying to doubt that message. He had to tell him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. That means what I am telling you is direct from the throne room. I know you may have been communicating with other angels that you ask questions and they will answer. But this one, they don't know it. That is why I have to be the one to bring it to you. You may think that you are old and that your wife has gone beyond the age of childbearing, but there are, there are principles that does not acknowledge physical weakness. There are powers through which the things you see physically come. Zachariah was still doubting. Gabriel had to make him dumb <laughs> so that he would not sabotage the miracle that God has ordained through the negative words of his mouth. We don't understand the words the power that comes from words. We don't understand it. Gabriel had to shut Zechariah's mouth up. A prophet of God, a priest, he was the man in charge of the temple. Yet his faith was not on that dimension of revelation that Gabriel was bringing. And one thing about angels is that they, they go with their environment. They, 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 they function with their environment. So if Gabriel appears in a crowd, in the midst of a crowd, everybody will just begin to know something about God. Revelations will just begin to pour in because there is a presence. Michael is a warlord. I call him my minister for defense. If Michael show up anywhere, people will just begin to die <laughs> because the only thing he knows is to destroy Enemies, oh, he will destroy enemies of God and enemies of the children of God and protect God's people. So anytime Michael shows up or anytime I invoke Michael into my activities, enemies will begin to die. Some of them will go to bed and they will not wake up. Because anytime Michael shows up, he shows up with his environment, which is war. War. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit, I'm going to conduct a teaching on angels. So this one is just to whet your appetite. Because there are mysteries about angels that the body of Christ need to know. There are mysteries about angels that the body of Christ need to know. So the Holy Spirit is the only one that knows the mind of God. So to know what God is thinking, to know the plans and purposes of God, to know God's will about any issue, the Holy Spirit is the one to ask. The Holy Spirit is the one to ask. In John 16, from verse 12 to 11, John chapter 16, from verse 12 
to 15. Yeah, sorry. John 16, 12 to 15. He said, I have yet many things to say unto you. That is Jesus speaking. But ye cannot bear them now. Jesus was telling his disciples, there are many things I have to tell you. There are dimensions I want to introduce you to. But you can't function in those dimensions without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit. There are, there are things we cannot know. We can't know it. Our minds cannot comprehend it. Because the, 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 the one that will make us to understand those revelations, those dimensions in God, is the Holy Spirit. So he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. In other words, he will guide you into those dimensions. He will make you understand those mysteries. He will make you know how to apply them so that the result you will get will be as desired. See, how be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Look at verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. You see that? The Holy Spirit will receive from the mind of God because he's the only one that knows the mind of God. And then he will reveal it. He will show it to us. He will make you know them. He will make you understand them. There is no other way you can know what God is thinking without the Holy Spirit. Verse 15. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore say thy, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. He shall take of mine and he shall show it unto you. He will reveal them to you. He will guide you into all realities, spiritual realities. He will guide you. He will guide your affairs. He will guide your applications of knowledge. He will guide you. We have not been told that the Holy Spirit has been the one behind every invention that has aided man's civilization. Every invention that has made life easier. The Holy Spirit is the creative energy of God. Our knowledge of the Holy Spirit in this part of the world is limited, is zero. To my, to my, to my, you know, to my understanding, is zero. It is time for us to begin to accept the Holy Spirit of God as the creative energy of God that empowers us for invention, innovations, creativity, effective leadership, right application of knowledge, greater dimensions of understanding. The Holy Spirit is all that we need to fulfill destiny as a people, as a nation, 
as a society, as a continent, as individuals. They might have given men's exploit different names, science, technology, this, that. But the Bible told us that the Spirit of God is the one that is behind every invention. Every invention that is helping lives. Today, the world population is growing fast. Not because of more children are born, no, but because of more lives are preserved. The medical science has advanced. Because men have mastered the arts of working with the Spirit of God for invention, for creativity, for innovations. But in this part of the world, it's only when somebody falls in the church, that's when we will believe that there is Holy Spirit. And then somebody will come out and say he had just invented a different kind of USB that will not only store so so and so, but it go beyond. It go beyond that. It will store also what you are thinking and we'll call it technology. We'll remove Holy Spirit from it. Because we don't have the understanding of scripture. We study scriptures as if we are, I don't understand. How can you invent without the Holy Spirit? He said, by me, kings reign. Study Proverbs chapter 8. That's where you will see the functionalities of the Spirit of God. What the Spirit of God does. He said, by me, kings reign. And princes rule, even judges. He said, I love them that love me. And they that seek me early, he said, they shall find me. In Africa, we seek for signs. We are not seeking for the one that manifests the signs. That's why we are not seeing signs. He said, they that love me, I will love them. And I will feed their treasures. I will feed their treasures. I will make them do extraordinary things. I will inspire them to invent, to create to produce. Productivity is a function of the Holy Spirit working actively in the life of an individual. You produce things. Things that will help humanity. Things that, that will save lives. Things that will solve national, continental international problems we have to wake up we have to wake up to the power of the Holy Spirit beyond whatever we have known him as we have to wake up to the reality that the Holy Spirit is the creative energy of God nothing is impossible with the Spirit of God hallelujah 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 11 to 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 to 13. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Even things that are freely given, without the Holy Spirit, you can't know them. You will think you have to labor for them. You will think you have to walk and sweat 
for things that God has made available to you free. But because many are not working with the Holy Spirit, they can't see those things. They will believe that they will have to work to get those things. So those who know that these things are freely given, I don't have to pray and fast and labor for those things. It's freely given to me of God. When we begin to function in that benefit, in that revelation of the Spirit, many will begin to see us as if we are doing something else. Because in their mind, they believe that these things are not free. You have to do one or two things to get them. We are not all functioning at the same level. But it is important that we understand who the Holy Ghost is, how we can work with the Holy Ghost, so that we can fulfill destiny and achieve outstanding success in life. He said, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, so that we will know what is freely given to us of God. So that we will know, the Holy Spirit brings knowing. It brings to your awareness things that are there, but you can't see them. You can't see them. They are there, but you can't see them. You need the opening of the eyes of your heart. And the Holy Spirit is the only one that can open that, that part of you to see, to comprehend, to understand. To understand. Because understanding is key. You see, he that wanders away from understanding shall abide in the congregation of the dead. Understanding is key. Key to success, key to victory, key to empowerment, key to prosperity. Just name it. Look at verse 13. Which things also we speak. The same thing that is freely given. He said, which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. You see why many don't understand sometimes when we speak, we set up a meeting like this and we are speaking, many don't seem to understand. Because there are some things that you don't understand it the first time. That is why the Bible told us that faith cometh by hearing and hearing. Understanding is a function of continuity. In hearing. Haven't you been talking to someone and you are trying to explain something to, to, to the person? And the person, is, the person seems lost and you are still trying to explain. And all of a sudden the person is saying, ah, oh yes, oh yes, I can see, I can see. Now he's beginning to understand you. Why? It took him or her some time for, her, for his, his or her mind to process the information. And the more you are speaking, the more you are trying to prove your point, the more you are giving the mind information to process, to arrive at understanding. So there are things we don't understand just by hearing it the first time. You must keep hearing it. The more you hear it, the more your understanding grows. Because in the things of the Spirit, there are no limits. There are no limits to the things of the Spirit. Where you day, now you day. Is in dimensions. That is why we must keep hearing. He said, be swift to hear and slow to speak. Be swift to hear and slow to speak. In other words, listen for two hours. Talk for ten minutes. Listen for two hours. Open your mouth. For 10 minutes and even if you have to speak let it be that you are asking questions that will enhance your understanding many don't ask questions they talk they don't ask questions he that asks questions never misses his way is a parable in the Igbo language when you ask questions, there is no way you can miss your way. People that miss their way, don't, they don't ask questions. Hallelujah. 
He said, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. We are not speaking things that we are taught at school. <laughs> this, is, this is spiritual business. Spiritual principles. Because the things we are taught at school, they are observations, physical observations. It's about environment. It's about things man have seen and observed. But there is another world beyond the physical. That is the spiritual world. The spiritual world gave birth to the physical world. So to understand the physical world, you must understand the spiritual world. He said, by faith, we understand that the words we are framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen, we are made of things which do not appear. Hallelujah. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. You see, the Holy Spirit is the one that teaches those mysteries of God. And because he's the one that is teaching us, we now interpret it with the same language that the Holy Ghost is using to teach us. That is why even in invention, you see some, invent some products are mind-blowing. How did they do it? They beat natural laws. They beat natural laws. They tell you, by the law of gravity, anything that goes up must come down. How did they beat that law to fly the plane? And the plane will fly on air for hours. Because there are laws. Spiritual laws. Spiritual laws. Spiritual laws has no respect for natural laws. He beat it hands down. That is why somebody can be born blind. You put your hands there and say in the name of Jesus, blindness, I command you out of these eyes. And the person will begin to see. Doctors have certified that this person is born blind, so there is nothing we can do. Not to the Holy Ghost. Hey, come on. Not to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the creative energy, meaning that it can create anything. Anything that will empower life, save lives. And I mean, anything that is good. Anything that will bring glory to God. He said, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. But which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. How do you interpret that? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That is King James. It actually means explaining spiritual realities with spiritual language. With spiritual language. Sometimes these things we call spiritual language sound so... People will look at you and say, this, this guy has gone nuts. That is why so many people miss out a lot in life. They miss out a lot in life because they are trying to, they are trying to, to understand it with their carnal minds. They are trying to fathom it. They want to see it before they will say, ah, I believe. That was what Thomas did. He saw and then he believed. But the law of the Spirit said, no, you must believe before you can see. And that which you have believed is what you will see. So if you want to see wealth, begin to believe in wealth. You want to see prosperity, begin to believe in prosperity. You want to be rich, begin to believe that you are rich already. Someone said, and I quote, he said, rich people are not rich because they have money. He said they have money because they are rich. You know, we are built by words. We are built by words. 
In Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, Paul said, Brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you. To the word of his grace, which is able to build you. The word of God is the key. If you don't have the word of God, the Holy Spirit cannot help you. Angels will just try to tell you one or two things. That means you'll be limited without the word of God. Because the word is everything. Hallelujah. We explain spiritual realities with spiritual language. What are you talking about, pastor? He said, let them that is weak say that they are strong. Let them that are weak say they are strong and they will begin to muster energy. Energy will begin to surge because they are saying it. And as they say it, they believe it. As they say it, they believe it. And before you know it, they became, they became mighty men. 400 people gathered themselves unto, unto David. And the Bible says David became a captain over them. And then over a period of time, those same men that, that we are, the Bible called them men that we are discontented. They were in debt. They were not happy about their lives. Meaning that they, they, they have failed in so many areas. Now they want, to, they want to activate a change. And they say, let us go to David. He's a man after God's heart. Not that God loved him more than, you know, there are way people interpret scriptures. When the Bible says David is a man after God's heart, that doesn't mean that God loved him more than this person or, this, or that person. It's that David was a man that is functioning in what we are uh, discussing this evening. He was a man that always wants to know what God is thinking. Before he does anything, he will go and consult the Spirit of God. He was always praying the prayer of inquiries. God, should I attack these people? Should I go this way? How do I do? God will give him instruction and he will follow. So those men knew it. They said, this guy is always, you know, he's always getting the mark anytime he, so let's go to him. Let him captain us. Let him teach us those things that he knows. And by the time David was done with these men, the Bible now began to reintroduce them as the mighty men of David. And they began to talk about Adino and the Dodo. One of them took a spear and slew 800 people in battle. Exploit began. Success began. These were men that were failures. Men that were discontented. Now they are mighty men. Those who used to mock them will no longer mock them. Because they have become mighty. Why? principles, revelations, spiritual realities has been communicated to them. So now they are empowered. They are empowered to begin to manifest their divinity and to unleash their potentials. Hallelujah. Now, how do you open up yourself to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and that of angels? Number one, become a student of scriptures and anointed materials. Become what? Become a student of scriptures and anointed materials. What anointed materials does is to sharpen your understanding about scripture. There are so many things you read in the Bible that you will not understand, no matter how you try to figure them out. But God has inspired men with greater minds to understand what he has written and to explain it in books, in tapes, in CDs, in so many different packages that will sharpen your understanding. So by reading the anointed materials, your understanding is enhanced So when you now study scriptures, your understanding of scriptures will also be enhanced because now you know. 
what is behind the written word. He says, iron sharpens iron, so as a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. And then he says, every purpose is established through wise counsel. But every purpose fail for lack of counsel. There is no way you can perfect your field, perfect your career, perfect anything that you are doing if you are bankrupt of words that builds. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then launch you into your realm of exploit, into your realm of success, into your realm of prosperity. Show me anyone that is commanding attention in his field. He's a word hunter. I have said it many times. He's a word hunter. You downplay the world and anointed materials you limit yourself. Because that is, that is where the Holy Spirit will speak to you from. He said, he shall take of mine and he shall show them to you. He shall take of mine things that God has inspired men to write. The Holy Spirit will take it. And explain it. The word show means he will explain it to you. He will make you see the reality of it. The understanding of it. Now how can the Holy Ghost show you something you don't even know? How can you, the Holy Ghost show you something in scripture that you don't even know that is in scripture? You don't study scriptures. You don't read books. You don't attend seminars. When there is a conference, you don't play it. But when they say Manchester and Liverpool is playing, you'll be the first to go and turn on the channel and sit there and watch all the first half and second half. And then you come out tomorrow and be wondering why your business is not going up. You come out tomorrow and be crying why your life is so messed up. You have to be motivated to do what you have to do to better your life. He said, don't be here as only, but do as of the world. I'm not saying you shouldn't watch football. I have entertainment that I like. But I don't let them consume more time than they should. We should be in control. Paul said, all things are permissible, but not, not all things are beneficial. And then all things are permissible, but I will not come unto the power of any. That means I will not take the time I have to study scriptures and be watching something that I know that is not going to add to the, you know, add any value to what I do. Everything should have their time. There are things I do once I wake up. You can't find me doing, doing any other thing except I have, I have done that thing that I do every morning. That my devotion. That my quiet time. That takes me at least two hours depending on my schedule for the day, but I do it first thing every morning. Hallelujah. Look at Isaiah 34 and verse 16. Isaiah 34 and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Seek ye out. Search out the book. Get them wherever they are. And do what? And read. You know, there are people that they will just buy book to decorate their, their living room. Or their office, you know, to make it look office-like. But they don't read it. There is no way you can be empowered by a book you never read. There is no way you can be empowered by a conference you didn't attend, online or on, on ground. 
The Holy Spirit is in you, waiting for you to bring up a material that he will now use to shed light, to sharpen your mind, to show you things. That is why successful people don't do everything. You can't find them condemning what they don't do. They simply don't do it because they have other things they want to do. You want to watch football all day, fine. But why not read that book that you bought? There's a book you bought. Last Sunday, there's a book I recommended. You have bought it, but you've not read it. So why not turn off the TV? and open that book and see what the Holy Spirit will say. See where the Holy Spirit will launch you. New inspiration, new revelation, new empowerment. That is how we fly. Lion is the king of the jungle. Not by size, but by strength. Why? He doesn't eat yesterday's food. He's always fresh in knowledge. He's always fresh in food. So his strength is never abated. So he remains the king of the jungle. And the Bible says, the just shall be as bold as the lion. That is when you have enough strength like the lion, then you become bold. Boldness is a function of confidence. There is something that is giving you confidence, that is making you bold. In Acts chapter 4, in verse 30, 31 down to 33, the Bible says, and they were filled with the spirit of boldness. They did something to enter that level of boldness. The Bible says they went and prayed. And after prayer, the place where they, were, where they prayed, we are shaken. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. That was not the first time they got the infilling. That was just an increase. An increase, that is what they received. They received a top up on their strength. And the authorities couldn't stop them anymore. Many are limited because they are trying to, to fight today's battle with yesterday's strength. And they want to attack tomorrow's battle with the strength of today. You have to launch yourself into a, a new, a fresh dimension of empowerment before you can face the next thing that is there. Because life is always about solving problems. David prayed and said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Not oil, fresh one. Fresh oil. May that fresh oil come upon you this minute. Wherever you are watching from. In the name of Jesus Christ. He says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. He said, no one of these shall fail. You see, these principles shall not fail. They are timeless they are always up to date. The scriptures were as effective thousands of years ago when it was documented. They are still as active. All you have to do is to know the scripture to apply. To know the instruction of scripture to obey. Hallelujah. He said, not one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it has commanded and his spirit, it has gathered them. The Holy Spirit is the writer, is the author of scriptures. The Holy Spirit is the author of scriptures and every other anointed writings of men. So he's the only one that can explain to the reader what he has written. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can explain to you what he, he told Paul to write. Haven't you observed that in the Old Testament, 
books like the book of Daniel and all that, they wrote things that were not for their time. When they finished writing, the angel says, see the book and keep it. It's not for now, it's for generations to come. So they wrote things that them themselves don't even know what, what is about. So as they want to know, the angel say, this one is not for your generation. So you don't need to know anything about it. Just see the book and keep it. And then he said, blessed are they that will read the book. Because every great destiny begins with a book. John said he wept because no one was found worthy to open the book. And then the, one of the elders told him, weep not. Because the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seals. But he said he wept because no one was found worthy. Why would John weep over a book that was sealed? What is his business with the book? Because he understands that until a book is open, destiny cannot be fulfilled. And he was a man of revelation. He was a man that was out to get revelation that will empower people of his days to prosper. So in his vision, he saw a book that is sealed. An angel told him, no one is worthy to open that book. John said he wept. He wept. Every great success story begins with a book. I read biographies a lot. I can tell you every great success that I have read was traceable to a book. An encounter with light from heaven through a book. The Holy Spirit cannot help you if you are bankrupt of God's word. He said the entrance of thy words, words, scriptures and then anointed materials, words, we are built by words. We are instructed by words. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you and then launch you into your realm of prosperity. So to understand the mind of God, to know what God is thinking, you key with the Holy Spirit. And the number one way you do that is to become a student of scriptures and other anointed materials. Number two, subscribe to a teaching platform. Subscribe to what? To a teaching platform. There is one thing God say he will not take away from any, any society, any generation. Teachers. Because the love of God knows no boundaries. Even when a people commit sin that is greater than sin, the love of God is still there. So even if he's going to punish them, there are levels he will not go. Because after punishing them, they will still need to be corrected. They will still need to pick up from where they stopped. They will still need to fulfill destiny. No individual is a waste. That is why in nations that are more advanced in all these things, they value life more than property. They value life, especially the life of children. You see them, they are chasing a criminal. The criminal is looking for a child he will go and carry. <laughs> and police will surrender. You, you have won. Drop the child. Please go your way. We'll, we'll plan how to catch you next time. But for now, leave this child alone. That child can be another Abraham Lincoln. That child can be another George Washington. That child can be another Namdi Azikiwe, Amadou Belo, Tafewa Balewa. Societies that understand that every human being has a potential, 
they value life more than property. When you come to any society, they value property more than life. They are not functioning on this knowledge. And I'm sorry for such society because they, 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 they have a long way to go before they will begin to understand things. You come to a society, no value, no, re no regard for life. They value only property. Material things, that is what they value. You talk about life, they say, no, 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 everybody, or you'll be your name. That is a worthless society that will soon crash beyond repair if something is not quickly done. Because every human being on this planet is loaded with potentials. With potentials. Even some animals have intelligence. I read a story about a woman during the tsunami in Thailand. This woman has a very a, a small dog. All of a sudden, the dog took, took, took over and started running away from the house. The woman was running after the dog. The dog would stop. When the woman comes cl come cl closer, the dog will continue running. The dog has sensed that something is about to happen. So the only way the dog can take the owner out of that environment was to be running. The woman will be coming, the dog will be running. Finally, by the time she got somewhere, people helped her to get the dog. She starts hearing what has just happened in her area. Buildings have crashed. People have died. God value life more than anything because he knows what he has deposited into every life, every individual. God knows the potential that he has deposited. And these potentials are unlimited. Unlimited. Where you stop is where you stop. That doesn't mean that that is the limit. No. You are only there for now. If you, if you move further, you will see that there is more to explore. There is more inventions to do. There is more creativity. There is more energy to tap from. Subscribe to a teaching platform. Why? There are things the Holy Spirit will not tell you. There are things angels will not whisper to your ears. You need to learn them from a fellow individual like you is a law in the spirit. I didn't know it until one day it dawned on me through scriptures that even the Holy Spirit, there are things the Holy Spirit will not show you. Angels will just stand still. They won't tell you. They want you to go and learn it so that you will know how to value your fellow human beings. It's a principle in the spirit. And I'll be showing us scriptures to validate that. Isaiah 30 from verse 20 to 21. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, <laughs> so even if the Lord is angry and he's doing some things, he said there are extent he will not go. So even if a society is, has committed sin and God is angry, in his discipline, there are extent God will not go. Why? There is a potential. If you destroy life, you have destroyed the potential. Because that potential is deposited in that life. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Thy teachers. So even if God is angry, is punishing a nation for their ignorance, they are not learning. They are not moving forward. They are stagnated and God is angry. He said he will not remove your teachers. Because if you remove the teachers, who will now educate the people? Because they, the reason why they are suffering is because they, they are ignorant. He said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So if you now remove the people that will communicate that knowledge, that means you have worsened the whole matter. No hope. So he said, even if the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into any corner. 
but thy eyes shall see thy teachers. They will always be around. Thy eye shall see thy teachers. They will always be conducting, conducting messages, preaching, teaching. Are you not seeing there are churches everywhere? It's biblical. You study about Paul, he was traveling everywhere he went, he would plant church there. In Antioch, in Laodicea, in Philippines, Macedonia, Corinthians, so many places all over the world, churches. Church is not a building. The building is where the church gather to learn. Is these days we call a gathering, a church. Those days they call it temple, place of learning. It's where people gather and the priest will open a book and be reading it before the crowd. Sometimes they will pick somebody from the crowd and say, read so -so and so chapter for us. And the priest will, will take it from there and began to define it to communicate the revelation to the people. Jesus was one of in that one of that city, and he was given a book to read. And the Bible says, when he opened, he find Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to do this and do that. He said, Thy eyes shall see thy teachers. Verse 21, and thy ears shall hear a voice behind thee. That means through the ministry of thy teachers. Through the knowledge that thy teachers will communicate. You say you will hear a voice behind you that will say, go this way, go this way. He say your eyes shall see your teachers. And then your ears shall hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it when you turn to the right and when you turn to the left. So one of the ways you, you are empowered to fulfill destiny is to subscribe to a teaching platform. To a teaching platform. Today many just want to see what is happening. They don't want to sit down and be tutored. They don't want to sit down and receive teachings that will inspire their spirit, inspire their soul, enhance the value of their lives and the value they add to others through the works of their hand. I wish I have time to tell you how much I spend on conferences. I buy flight ticket. I apply for visa to travel just to attend the conference. I spend money on books and I read them. I don't decorate my house with books. I, I pack them where I can sit comf you know, comfortably and read. I'm always calling for fresh oil fresh baptism, fresh inspiration, fresh ideas. Because I learned that lion remained the king of the jungle, not by size, but by strength. And that strength is a function of him eating fresh food every day. Every day. You bring yesterday's food to lion, he will just sniff it and walk away. But when it's fresh, you will start hearing the meat. There is nothing like fresh inspiration, fresh ideas. Sometimes people try to solve today's problem with yesterday's technique and it's no more working. The technique of yesterday is no more working. Things have upgraded. So they're, they're, when you see a company, for example, that is trying to catch up with competition and they are working on yesterday's principle that has failed or is outdated. Now tell me, wouldn't you be surprised to see a company that is still using Estavista? 
when we are talking about Windows 13, and you see a company, they, still, they, they are still using Windows Esta Vista or Word 02 or 03, you will pity them because you know they are not going anywhere. Even the apps on your phone, you just downloaded it last week. Now you're on WhatsApp. You're on this, you're on that. Just three days later, you wake up one morning, you tap the WhatsApp to see what is going on. And they say you are using an old version. But you just downloaded it last week. And they say to continue to use this service, update your, your, the app. And you tap update. And the app will update. And then you, you are brought back to your platform with some new features. If you refuse to update, you will deny yourself the right to use the app. Because the company has upgraded. And because they have upgraded, automatically all their services follow up with that upgrade. There is nothing like fresh oil from heaven. There is nothing like fresh inspiration from heaven. It refreshes. It reassures you that everything is in order. Hallelujah. You must subscribe to a teaching platform. A teaching platform is where your understanding is sharpened. A teaching platform is like a, 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 a stronger, a sharper iron that sharpens your own iron. Because the Holy Spirit will not tell you everything. Some things you have to learn it from someone. Why? That person is the custodian of that revelation. And your success is tied to that person's revelation. We don't know that sometimes our destinies are connected with a ministry, a platform. And heaven will not do anything until we subscribe to that platform. Look at Moses. Moses was a great prophet of God. They don't even, Bible don't always refer to him as prophet, as the man of God. Because calling him a prophet is like, it's like putting him in the same category with every other prophet. Moses was outstanding in his ministry. So the Bible always referred to him as the man of God. But he was going through some stress in his leadership. His in-law had to cancel him on how to make his leadership effective and stressless. In Exodus 18, from verse 14 to 26, Moses learned from Jethro, his father-in-law, the key to say group. This was where we saw that leadership can be effective and stressless by delegating responsibilities. On the context of church, you have say groups. Each group is for a particular purpose. Each group is for a particular purpose. And all of them serve in their different purposes to achieve the main objective of the whole church. Moses didn't know it. It was Jethro, his father-in-law, that gave him that counsel. And he took it. And things be be began to be easier for him. Paul was sent to a man called Analias. On his way to Damascus, Jesus stopped him on the way. We all know the story about the conversion of Paul. But my focus here was that Jesus sent him to a man called Analias. He asked Jesus, what do you want me to do? Jesus didn't tell him anything. He said, go into the city. It shall be told you what you will do. Uh -uh. But I'm talking to you now. 
Are you not the Alpha and Omega? <laughs> are you not the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Are you not the beginning and the end? That means you know everything. So tell me what I have to do. I need to know my assignment. Jesus said, go into the city. Go and see a man. And by the time you are done with that man, you will know what you have to do. You will know your assignment. Sometimes we need to study scriptures and ask questions. Why didn't Jesus just give the details to Paul on spot? No. There are jurisdictions. There are what we call territorial authority. Analias was a man that has conquered the whole Damascus via prayer. In the sense that no angel, no spirit can enter Damascus and carry out any activity without the knowledge of Analias. So he was sent to Analias. Before he met with Analias, Jesus appeared to Analias and said, I have somebody for you. I know you are the Baba of this territory under my authority. I want you to take care of Paul for me. Let him know what he has to do. By the time Paul was done, I mean, by the time Analias was done with Paul, he knew exactly his assignment and he began to carry it out. Again, Moses was sent to a man called Bezalel. He studied the book of Exodus chapter 31 from verse 1 to 6. Moses has been given the mandate to build the tabernacle. But he was just busy doing nothing. Because he was trying to figure out how he, how he can build what God has instructed him to build. God now had to speak to him and said, Moses, there is a man in your midst. His name is Bezalel. I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in knowledge, in understanding, and in all manner of workmanship. Go to him. Go to him. By the time he's done with you, you will know how to build what I have commanded you to build. Many have been given visions of things to do, but they are waiting for God to give them instruction. See, God doesn't give details. God doesn't give details. God will tell you what to do, but he won't tell you how to do it. Most of the time, the Holy Spirit will even be silent. He will not tell you anything. You will pray and pray. Holy Spirit will keep quiet. It's a sign that you, must, you have to locate somebody. You have to locate somebody that is a custodian of that oracle and partake from that person's grace. That's why I'm excited that you are listening, you are watching, you are connected from wherever you are connected from. Many of you, your destiny is tied to this ministry. And my prayer is that you will fulfill destiny. You will succeed in anything that you put your hands onto in the name of Jesus. Peter, James, and John, they all followed. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They followed Jesus. And he, he mentored them and they fulfilled destiny in a grand style. These were just fishermen. But they followed. They identified the Christ and they followed. You know, Luke was a medical doctor. But he left his medical profession and followed Paul. Why? He discovered that his destiny is tied to the ministry of Paul. So he left his medical profession and followed Paul and he fulfilled destiny. And he fulfilled destiny. Even Paul himself, before he met with Analias, he, he, he wrote in, in the book of Galatia that he was zealous of the traditions of his father. Of his fathers, I mean. How did he become zealous? How did he become a man that is now an extremist in the religions of his father? It was Gamalia. There was a man called Gamalia. That man was the man that mentored Paul and introduced him into the Sahendrin's court. And he became their hit man. So when the name of Jesus was spreading everywhere, Paul was the one they contracted as their hit man to make sure that all the followers of Christ were wiped out. 
That was what he was going to do in Damascus when Jesus arrested him. Because that Damascus was where all the Christians that were in Judea, in Samaria, in, in Jerusalem, all those areas, they fled to Damascus. So Jesus knew that if he didn't stop Paul and he entered Damascus, he was given authorization. That means the, the, the political authorities of Damascus couldn't have stopped Paul. He was given a, an authorization that will permit him to enter Damascus and arrest everybody and even kill anyone that he didn't fit. So Jesus had to interfere, stop him on the way and change his destiny forever. Hallelujah. Today, when you study the writings of Paul, you will understand why Jesus stopped him on the way. You will understand that that guy was carrying greatness without knowing. Religion nearly robbed him of his greatness in life. Religion nearly robbed him of the fulfillment of his destiny. He was loaded with potentials. Jesus looked at him and said, Paul, you don't know what you carry. But I won't let you enter Damascus and carry out your, 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 your assignment. I will change your assignment so that you will use that zeal. That zeal you have in you, you will use it for, your, for the destiny that you are meant to fulfill. Hallelujah. The Bible told us about a man called Enoch. The Enoch that God translated. The Bible record that he was not found because God has translated him. That prophet was a teaching prophet. He was not just a prophet that we prophesy doom and prophesy low. No, he was a teaching prophet. His ministry was a teaching ministry. A very powerful prophet that walked with God. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. That is how... His biography was captioned in scripture. That Enoch walked with God and was not found because God has translated him. He had 325 followers. All of them were kings of kingdoms and territories. So the day God sent an angel to come and tell Enoch, to come to heaven, he was told to go to a mountain. That when he gets to that mountain, that he will be translated from there. You know, there are something about mountains. Even Moses, God told Moses, go to Soroso Mountain. When you reach there, die. <laughs> you know, some instruction. God said, go to the mountain of Soroso. And so when you get there, say, die. That means Moses know how to die. <laughs> He understand what it means to die. God say, go there. When you, when, you, when you get there, die. That means leave the body. Go enter heaven. Leave the body. So he got there. He dropped the body and entered heaven. Only for him to arrive in heaven, Michael realized that the body of Moses has some intelligence in it. It has some light. If the powers of darkness get that body, Something wrong will happen on the, on the earth. So he came as a warlord. He came. He came to carry the body of Moses. When he arrived, he saw Lucifer there. He said, the Lord rebuke you. I know you will be. I know you will come for this body. Get out of this place. And he took the body of Moses to heaven. Now, this is a man that has died. Yet his body is important to heaven. <laughs> That's when you will know that men are not just men. There is something, there is something men carry and their body has tapped that thing. Their body has tapped that thing. So the body also had to be carried to heaven to be preserved. So Enoch set out to the mountain of translation. Oh, you know only mountain of transfiguration, the one of Jesus. But there is mountain of translation. The same one God told Moses, when you get there, something will happen to you there. You will disappear. Your body will just drop. So this Enoch set out to, uh, set out to that mountain 
325 kings that we are his followers followed him. They said, no, we won't let you out of our sight. We can't imagine ruling our kingdoms without your teachings. We'll be failures. They followed him, they followed him. It was a long journey. So as they were journeying, some of the kings began to lose hearts because at a time, Enoch would tell them, please return to your homes. This mission is for me alone. God has sent for me. So you guys should just return to your homes. I'm sure God will send you another prophet that will continue from where, you know. They said no, that they won't let him out of their side, that anywhere he go, that they will follow him. Finally, before, when he now finally get to the mountain, it was remaining only 125 kings. Do you know that when Enoch was translated, he was translated with 125 kings. Those men couldn't imagine themselves living in this world without the teachings of Enoch, without the counsels of Enoch, without the revelation knowledge they received from Enoch. So they decided to go with him. Say, wherever you go, we'll go with you. I wish I have time to go deeper and tell you why Enoch was sent to come to heaven. It's not that he was old. It's not that, you know, God said, come. There is a mission I want you to do in heaven. So the rest that went back, after some time, they began to wonder, why haven't the remaining 20, 125, why haven't they returned home? They now sent some men to go in search of that mountain because they know where it was. When they got there, they saw that 125 men journeyed into heaven with Enoch. They journeyed into heaven with Enoch. They couldn't imagine themselves doing anything on earth without Enoch cancel. Without the teachings of a man, they, they, they saw themselves as failures without Enoch's teachings. Because there are things that you must go to your fellow human being and learn it. The Holy Spirit will not tell you that. God will not tell you that. Angels will not whisper it to your ears. You must identify the individual, the ministry, the platform that your destiny is connected with. And go and sit there. Connect and remain connected. Hallelujah. You know, men suffer for nothing. Men suffer for nothing because they are, they, are, they are waiting for something to drop from heaven. When there are men, there are individuals that have become custodians of divine secrets, divine revelations, divine empowerment. And their destinies are connected with these individuals. But because we don't value people, we don't, we don't value talents, we don't value what people carry. That's what many suffer. You will not suffer in the name of Jesus. And finally, number three, always act on your unusual dreams. Always act on your unusual dreams. Dreams can be very, very spiritual. Dreams can be very, very spiritual. When you understand that God can reveal things to you in your dream, it will help you a lot. Because there are we are talking about the Holy Spirit, the angels, and then the, the, the study of the world. There are people that may not be active in these areas. Maybe they will, be, they will be active in one area and not active in the other areas. But if you understand that God can speak to you in your dreams, and then when you wake up and you realize that this is a revelation, 
God has just shown me something and you act on it, then you will master that act that compels things to change in your favor. I don't joke with my dreams. There's something I will see in my dream. I will know what is coming. I'm telling you. Once I see it, I know what is coming. It's your personal work with God. These are channels of the Spirit that you must master. They are doors through which the Spirit can communicate to the human. Look at Job 33 from verse 16 to 17. Job 33, 15 to 17. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. You know, most of the time, the things we want to do are not in God's ordinance. It's not, it's not God's will. So for him to stop us from acting foolishly on what we think is wise, he will show us the real thing in the dream, expecting us to wake up, realizing that, oh, this is revelation from God, and then we act on it and cancel the one that we have already thought that it was the best. The Bible says, even what appears to be foolishness in the sight of God is still wiser than the wisdom of men. Dreams. Don't downplay your dreams. You study the Old Testament, you see that even the pagan kings, they don't joke with their dream. Pharaoh had a dream and said, I need to know the meaning of it. Even people that don't believe in God, when they dream, they want to know the meaning. Like Pharaoh, like Nebuchadnezzar. Many of them. Nebuchadnezzar was a man that doesn't believe in God. He even built an, his own image and tell people to worship him, that he's the, he's the God. But he had a dream. And he was troubled. He needed, some, he needed someone to interpret that dream. He needed someone to interpret the dream. That is how Daniel came. He even issued an order that, any, that if they can't tell him the meaning of the dream, that he will kill all the wise men in the kingdom and, and employ new people. And Daniel was one of the wise men. That means if he were to kill everybody, Daniel would be involved. And his three friends, Shedlak, Meshach, and Abadnego, they will also be, be involved. But Daniel came and said, why has the king issued such an order that if the dream was not interpreted, that everybody would die? They say, ah, he had the dream, oh, the man just woke up this morning, put everybody for trouble. Yeah? Well, we are not with him when he had the dream. Now he's telling us to tell him the dream and to interpret it. Then they say, well, we know that there is a God that nothing is impossible with. Just tell the king to give us some time and we will tell him what he wants to hear. The king granted the time. But the Bible records that then the secret was revealed to Daniel in the dream of the night. Daniel just went to bed with his friends after praying to God. He went to bed. And he woke up in the morning realizing that he had a dream and that dream was an answer to the prayer he prayed before going to bed. You see, that is the key. How did Daniel knew that that dream he had was the answer? Because not all dreams are spiritual. Not all dreams are revelations. Your ability to know that this dream that you have dreamed is something. That is what we are talking about. It's a journey. It's a journey. The more you pay attention to your dreams, the more you understand by the help of the Holy Spirit which one is from God and which one came 
as a result of the rice and chicken you ate before going to bed. Hallelujah. You study the book of Acts chapter 16 from verse 9 to 15. The message translation. He said, that night Paul had a dream. A Macedonian stood on the far shore and called across the sea, come over to Macedonia and help us. That was what Paul had. In the dream, he saw a man said, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he woke up, he concluded that God has called them to go and plant a church in Macedonia. Many of you, God have revealed things to you in your dream. You wake up and you say, ah, it's just a dream. It's not just a dream. It's not just a dream. We understand that dreams are very, very complicated. Like I said, there is something you will eat, then go to bed. That thing will trigger a kind of mind activity, subconscious activity. Even the Bible said, a dream cometh by the business of the day. The billboard you saw, the TV program, even the conversations you had at your place of work, your business place and all that. Those things can replay. They can replay while you are asleep. But you must understand that not all those replay are just carnal. Your unusual dreams, dreams that you don't usually have, anytime you have them, pay attention. God is trying to reveal something to you. Hallelujah. Paul saw someone standing on the shore and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And the Bible said the dream came, the dream gave Paul his map. He went to work at once, getting things ready to cross over to Macedonia. All the pieces came together. He said, we know now for sure that God has called us to preach the good news to the Europeans. That was how the gospel came to Europe. Because someone had a dream. After waking up, the person realized that this dream is not just a dream. This dream is a vision, is a revelation from God to go to Macedonia or Europe and preach the good news to them. Hallelujah. Don't downplay your dreams. Like I said, dreams can be very, very spiritual in terms of divine guidance, divine instruction on what to do to achieve success in life and fulfill destiny. Pay attention to your dream. Pay attention to your dream. And my prayer is that you will fulfill destiny. I say you will fulfill destiny. You will live a prosperous life. Hallelujah. Your joy will be unspeakable, full of glory, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us today. I'm so excited. I believe this message has inspired you. I believe this message has empowered you to understand how to know the mind of God. Commit yourself in the study of scriptures and anointed materials Subscribe to a teaching platform so that your mind, your iron mind can be sharpened by other ions. And number three, pay attention to your unusual dreams. And by the help of the Holy Spirit, you will fulfill destiny. Thank you very much. God bless you for joining us. As a church, we receive offering at the end of each service. So please, if you want to give your offering, you can do that with the description on the message as you watch. Or you can go to our website, jcebayonline.org. Click online, and there you will find all the details to give your offering. And the Lord bless you as you do so. Your week is blessed. Your family is blessed. Your children, your business, your career, the works of your hands. Everything that you are connected to, I declare them blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful week, and see you next Sunday with your testimony.